You don't have to be vegan to understand that slaughtering cows on the industrial scale that we do today to feed our insatiable appetite for beef is one of the biggest drivers of climate breakdown. I think we all hold on to this vaguely romantic notion of Daisy the cow happily trotting around the field chewing on a daisy with a cowbell, obviously, then being willingly and lovingly milked in the corner of the field by a smiling buxom wench each morning, then let back to amble happily around the field until finally Daisy becomes too old to give milk and then sadly she needs to be put down, at which point she is humanely killed with the same wench that has milked her for the last 18 years, nuzzling her crying, whispering soothingly into her ear until her last breath. Then of course we know the rest. In order to eat daisy, we kind of disassociate the ribeye steak, the rump steak, sirloin steak, cheeseburger, sundae roast, spaghetti bolognese, sausages or piece of brisket with daisy the cow and she becomes essentially beef. Now, if you think that's hard, the reality today is very, very different from this storybook view, to the point where the huge scale of industrial farming of these sentient beings is now threatening the very environment and life support system that humanity itself needs to continue to exist on this earth. I was out over Christmas at an industry event for my day job and got talking with some people about this channel and someone asked, what are the most important things I can do to reduce my own personal carbon footprint? And my answer was for most of us, it is simply moving towards a more plant-based diet. But if you drive a lot, it's going to be driving less, unless you fly a lot, and then it's going to be flying less. But anyway, today I'm going to be talking about beef and cows and why our present level of global consumption is unsustainable. Then we're going to finish with my lovely assistant Anthea reading four cow questions with the answers this week supplied by Google. So do stick around for that one. But with no further ado, let's get on with it. I should probably point out here that I am not a vegan myself, although I would describe myself as a work in progress. Oh, what a hypocrite, I hear you cry. And you know what, you might even be right, but to quote George Monbiot, there are only two kinds of human beings, hypocrites and cynics. Neither one is morally pure, but of the two, I know which one I would rather be. And Jonathan Pye said, and you've got to love a bit of Jonathan Pye. Sorry, that's not what Jonathan Pye said. That's what I just said about Jonathan Pye. Anyway, what Jonathan Pye said is on climate breakdown, you can either be a hypocrite or an arsehole. Anyway, I'm glad we've got that one out of the way. Let's talk about beef. Too many mouths to feed and not enough cows. Beef and milk consumption are sadly both growing worldwide as the developing world who have historically seen meat as a luxury item can now afford to have it on their dinner table. And the beef industry marketing arm along with the tobacco industries move in to exploit this. Obviously the tobacco industry is selling tobacco and the beef industry is selling beef and milk, but they are both, along with the fossil fuel industry, selling death on a genocidal scale. Today there are around 1.5 billion cows on earth, so that's roughly one cow for every family of five on the planet. The total human population consumes 5.2 billion gallons of water every day. Cows consume 45 billion gallons of water every day. Humans consume 21 billion pounds of food each day. Cows consume 135 billion pounds of food each day. I'll talk about cow shit later. So what is the real cost of beef? When I'm talking about the cost of beef, I am talking about its cost to the environment. And that is staggeringly, staggeringly high particularly if you compare it to the food that cows eat. Not the grass, not the grass, man. 
but the corn, maize, wheat, soy, which are all fit for human consumption, but are grown largely for raising animals for human consumption, which each have a carbon footprint of roughly one pound of CO2 to one pound of food produced. The carbon footprint of one pound of beef, including methane emissions, is around 35 pounds. For easy maths, that is 35 times the carbon footprint of corn, maize, wheat, or soy. Yes, but you don't get protein from vegetables. Bollocks. The greenhouse emissions to produce one gram of protein from beef is 62 grams. To produce just one gram of protein from wheat or maize, it is 1.2 grams of CO2. So every gram of protein from beef has a carbon footprint of 51 times higher than wheat or maize. That is 51 more people who can be fed every time you decide not to eat beef. Let's talk about poo. When you talk about poo, it is really important to get this into some sort of perspective. When Daisy was ambling cheerfully around, being milked by a buxom wench, and then shitting in various parts of the field, this is entirely manageable. In fact, the farmer can use or even sell the poo for fertilizer. But when you are farming on an industrial scale, as we do today, to the point where in the USA, cows produce 130 times more waste than the human population, you have got a big problem. A big job problem, perhaps. A big problem, a big job problem. This shit has to go somewhere, and where it goes is as pollution into our rivers, seas, and oceans. It really is pretty disgusting stuff. And when you say, well, these are just plant-eating animals, that's okay. How would you feel if the vegan next door started shitting on your lawn or in your reservoir? <laughs> Let's talk about the actual cows. Assuming that we don't actually make the earth uninhabitable through our inaction over the next five to six years, I honestly think that future generations will look back at this time and be appalled that we as humans ever ate other sentient beings. And beyond the environmental impact of the modern way of rearing Daisy the cow and slaughtering her for our dining pleasure, the sheer horrific cruelty of it deserves a mention. A modern cow's natural life, and I say modern here because today's cows are all descended from wild ox, dating back some 10,000 years, so even older than Keith Richards. They have been domesticated by unnatural selection to become the docile, milk-giving, grain-fed, fattened beasts of today. But their natural life would be around 20 years. Well, actually, it probably wouldn't be 20 years because as the docile creatures we have now unnaturally bred them to be, they would be pretty low on the food chain and left out in the wild would probably be eaten by predators. Something else we can be so proud of. However, since we have also bred them to grow quickly, for a cow bred for beef, they are usually slaughtered at between 12 months optimum and 18 months, with dairy cows being slaughtered at around four years old. So in human terms, that's like slaughtering a six-year-old for their meat, but if you wanted their breast milk as well, cows reach puberty around 10 months. That would be 16 in human years. I did put out a video on milk quite a while back where I get into this and you can see a link to that in the description below and also here. But the life of an average dairy cow is not, it's not a happy one. Obviously this differs from dairy farm to dairy farm and obviously some are good and some not so good. And this is a relative term. And maybe there are still a few genuine Daisy the Cow type dairies out there, but the majority are industrial dairies. And an industrial dairy cow is forced to become pregnant through artificial insemination nearly every year of their short lives, starting at just 10 months old. They are inseminated artificially or otherwise, not so that they can be loving mothers, but so that they can give milk after they give birth after nine months, which then goes to humans. Their baby calves are then typically taken away from their mothers shortly after birth. Male calves are castrated and separated from the females so that they can be fattened up or sold for beef production. And females begin the same work as their mothers once they themselves reach puberty after 10 months. After their cows have been taken away, mother cows are then hooked up to a milking machine two or more times a day 
with not a milking stool or a buxom wench in sight. After four or five years of this cycle and three to four in inseminations stroke pregnancies, cows in the dairy industry are slaughtered because their bodies are considered to be spent. And that is the life of a dairy cow. The male calves don't actually do quite so well. Actually, I don't know if that's better or worse. After being separated at birth or very soon after from their mothers, they are generally slaughtered aged between 12 and 18 months. Although the lucky ones, the ones raised lovingly by Burger King, have fed lemongrass in the last four months of their lives so that they don't fart as much. And some are also fed seaweed for the same reason. Why we need to move towards a more plant-based diet. 1.5 billion cows and counting. Each dairy cow will shit 120 pounds of their excrement every single day. Each beef cow will shit 60 pounds of excrement every single day. That is a lot of shit. In terms of protein, beef is 51 times the carbon footprint of eating plants. And then there is the ongoing destruction of rainforests and very own life support system. And then the unimaginable suffering of a billion and a half cows as a result of our horrific industrial farming practices. And when I say unimaginable, it is because we choose not to imagine. And we really must. We must also start to imagine what this world will look like at 2.8 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Wake up! It is not going to be okay. Unless we all start making some personal changes, it is not going to be okay. Eating less beef and giving up milk is a pretty easy win. And please remember, Daisy the cow is a romantic and outdated view of the life of a dairy cow or beef cow. Coming up next, Anthea is going to read out a couple of questions about beef post on Google along with Google's replies. So do stick around for that. But if you have found this video useful, disturbing, insightful, you can share it on Facebook, you can share it on Messenger, you can share it on email, Reddit, LinkedIn, Tumblr, Twitter, or anywhere else. And if you have not already done so, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification button so that I can annoy you every week with a every time I put out a new video. It is entirely free. I don't want your money. I just want your eyes, your ears, and your open minds. Let me have your comments. Let me have your questions, your feedback. What do you think is the most important thing that you can personally do to stop climate breakdown? I read every message, even when you are unbelievably cruel, nasty, crazy, threatening, and often certifiable. And please do give the like button a scratch. Because of the nature of my channel, it's not exactly cats doing cute things. I am seen as subversive. So I don't do well on YouTube's algorithms. Maybe it's because I'm just shit. But anyway, so subscribing, liking, sharing, or commenting, or doing all or any of these things really does help me reach a wider audience and hopefully affect positive change. But please do stick around for coming up next because it's Ask Angus, where this week, Google answers my questions directly. Coming up next, it's Ask Angus. So welcome back to Ask Angus, where this week Google answers my questions. Let me explain. Whenever I put these videos together, I spend a lot of time researching my subject, so you don't have to. And this week's video was no different. And in the course of my research, I found these answers to a few canned Google questions, which I felt were worth sharing here. And I do know that 
just because it's on Google doesn't make it 100% correct. But there is rarely smoke without fire. And these questions, in particular the last one, quite move me. So can I have the first question, uh, please, uh, Anthea? How many years could a dairy cow produce milk? The dairy cow produces large amounts of milk in its lifetime. Production levels peak at around 40 to 60 days after calving. Production declines steadily afterwards until milking is stopped at about 10 months. Do cows like being milked? Cows do like being milked since it relieves the pressure caused by excess milk building up in their udders. Some cows love being milked so much that they line up outside the milking parlour in anticipation. Do dairy cows get slaughtered for meat? All dairy cows end up at slaughter. Both the dairy and beef industries feed into the same system. The abuse wreaked upon the bodies of the female dairy cows is so intense that many of those cows become downed or spent. This term refers to cows that are so sick and or injured that they are unable to walk or even stand. Is it true that cows have good memories? Cows have great memories. If you find yourself in the presence of a cow, be nice to her because she will remember you. Cows have great memories and are very good at remembering and recognising faces, even after long periods of time. Oh my God, if that last one is even partly true, can you imagine how gut-wrenching it must be to have your children taken away from you at birth three or four times before being dragged off to die aged 16 in human years. If you would like to see the video on the subject I put together on milk, there's a link here. Uh, and if you are a climate breakdown denier, then this might be worth watching. Seriously, the more I know.